Welcome to Key Tech. Please describe this channel if you are interested in today's video. When ASML President Peter Winning statement three years ago that the Chinese are extremely smart and the blockade will only stimulate their technological potential was still regarded as a joke by some people in Silicon Valley. Chinese scientists have completely penetrated the iron wall of the Western Qi blockade with a beam of 193 nanometer laser. On March 25, 2025, the Chinese Academy of Sciences officially announced that a major breakthrough in solid state deep ultraviolet (DUV) laser light source technology was achieved without any rare gas or reliance on imported crystals and a gap was torn in the most critical hard area of the lithography machine. This heavy blow not only shattered the cheap blockade wall carefully built by the United States, Japan, and the Netherlands, but also forced ASML to urgently convene a board of directors to discuss countermeasures because China showed disruptive innovation this time, and completely revolutionized the application field of gas lasers with solid-state crystal technology. Speaking of the exquisiteness of technology, it might as well start with the precision core transformation of the lithography machine. The lithography machine of the past was like a coal-fired steam train, relying on argon fluorine mixed gas to ignite the light ball to generate 193 nanometer lasers. This time, the Chinese Academy of Sciences resolutely innovated the power core and adopted YB, YG crystal as the new power source. First it gave birth to 1030 nanometers of infrared light, and then it went its separate ways to perform the laser deformation magic. One beam was compressed to 258 nanometers of ultraviolet light, and the other was extended to 1,553 nanometers of infrared light. Finally, the two beams of light collided violently in the LBO crystal, miraculously stimulating 193 nanometers of deep ultraviolet laser. This gasless light making stunned is like cooking with an induction cooker and abandoning the gas tank, which directly blasted a huge gap in the western pattern barriers. The excellence in design lies in the implementation of the dimensionality reduction strategy. ASML's Excima laser is like a picky aristocrat who must be served by a specific gas and refuses to work if it is slightly neglected. In contrast, China's solid-state laser is a tough guy who doesn't care about details, it does not need to be served by gas, its volume is reduced by 30%, its energy consumption is halved, and even its maintenance costs can be reduced to the point where it can add a cheap production line. Particularly outstanding is the cutting-edge technology of Vortex Beam, which seems to equip the laser with spiral power instantly unlocking the three-dimensional nano-carving technique. This operation also amazed ASML engineers. The laws of physics can be reshaped in this way. Breakthroughs in the industrial chain are the key to success. In the past, the purchase of ASML equipment still relied on the United States, but now Shenyang has cast the foundation of crystals, Xi'an has produced optical components, Qingdao has controlled the control system, and the entire industrial chain is covered with Chinese labels. U.S. Department of Commerce officials searched the sanctions list, but were shocked to find that China's technology path was completely outside their blocking blacklist, making it impossible for them to strangle it. The Dutch media said sourly, the Chinese used China's prophecy to make China lose face. However, behind the joy are arduous challenges. At present, this technology is only a handsome man in the laboratory. Compared with the 100-watt strongman of ASML, 
the power of 70 MW is like a bicycle race next to a high-speed rail. On the journey to engineering, there are three steep mountains. Can the crystal withstand continuous impact? Can the heat dissipation mechanism tame the enthusiasm of the laser? Can the control system be as solid as a rock? If these difficulties cannot be overcome, no matter how outstanding the technology is, it can only shine in academic chapters. The global chip landscape is undergoing reconstruction. TSMC urgently set up a rate supply chain emergency team. Samsung drastically cut its R&D budget in order to make a breakthrough, and even Intel quietly established contact with Chinese suppliers. What is particularly striking is that this technology can also be replicated and expanded. Once the wavelength is shortened to 13.5 nanometers, the dominant position of EUV lithography machines will be shaken. The U.S. think tank simulated the worst scenario. Once China achieves mass production of solid-state DUV, the global mid-range chip market may usher in the era of China. In the final analysis, this change in the field of light sources is a profound test of survival wisdom. From breaking free from the dilemma of being constrained by ASML, turning to independently opening up new pubs, from dismantling components to seek alternatives, to comprehensively reshaping the technical path, the Chinese have written a thrilling chapter of counterattack in just five years. At that time, the United States was wielding the stick of executive orders, while China had opened up a new arena with breakthroughs in basic physics. Just like that ray of 193 nanometer laser, although it looks soft, it can ignite a blazing flame on the cold iron curtain of the cheap wall. The world is like a chess game, and each game is new. The former technical beggars are now technical navigators and tomorrow's rule makers. When it comes to the tenacity of surviving in adversity, the Chinese people who have experienced 5,000 years of wind and rain are well aware of the way of rebirth in desperate situations. While the argon fluoride gas flows in the ASML factory, the crystal amplifier of the Chinese Academy of Sciences has quietly started to roar. The key to cheap hegemony has never been on Washington's embargo list, but hidden in the flashing lasers in the Beijing laboratory.